so the texture is getting much more tightly packed together. The reason that's important is that essentially this has just this exact same amount of texture information as does its larger counterpart. And you have to kind of start to gauge whether or not you really need that much information on so small of an object. Every single texture that you use is more memory that is, be, is required for your level. So if you have a lot of surfaces in your level that are turning orange or red, that means you have probably have a lot more texture information than you really need on those objects. So that's really what that boils down to. Now if we switch over to shader complexity, we get yet another color scheme. This gives us feedback on how many shader instructions are in each material applied to the surfaces of our level. The green objects have a very low number of instructions, and the more instructions or the more complex that material gets, the color is going to shift over to the warm spectrum. So generally, you want to see uh, green objects. Now, our terrain is red. That has a lot of different layers to give us various effects. If we switch over to lit mode, we've got kind of a a primary material across the whole thing that's being blended through to show some rocks. There are several different things going on here. So that's going to be one of the more complex materials, just to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at. Now, as we switch over from here, we have the light map density. Now, light maps are the way that baked lighting works inside your UDK levels. A lot of the lighting you see across the surface of a level is pre-calculated before the player ever sees the world. It allows things to be handled a lot, a lot more quickly when the player is actually running around if a lot of that lighting information is already pre-baked. This light information is stored inside what is called a light map, and you can get an overall idea of how dense your light maps are, meaning how much memory would be required to produce that light map using this system. So you can set up the ideal density, you can set up the maximum amount of density that you'd be willing to tolerate, which by default is set to three, and then you're going to get some color coding to represent how dense your light maps are. Now, by default, in this particular level, the light maps are all pretty low, and it's a little hard to see which objects have tighter, uh, tighter light maps, but you can see we have some objects here that obviously have much more dense light maps. If we switch back over to lit mode, we can see why. They've got some interesting uh, lit properties about them, much smaller models. Now, if we switch back over to light map density, if we're just ha kind of having a hard time visualizing with everything being so dim, we can take our grayscale scale and increase that. And that's just kind of taking the overall output and boosting the contrast on it. Now, if we switch off render grayscale, we get color feedback here. And this is the same thing you were looking at before. No information has changed, but you start off with blue being your lowest level of density, and that's going to start shifting up to a warm spectrum. So if we take our color scale and increase that, we can already see that spectral shift starting to take place where certain objects are starting to shift over toward a, a bluish green. So that's a quick look at our light map density. Our last view mode is lighting only with texel density. Now this looks a lot like lighting only. As a matter of fact, let's just jump back over to lighting only. And you can see the difference between the two. And I can close the density rendering options window. We don't need that anymore. The difference is that lighting only with texel density allows you to see how compressed your textures are at the same time you're looking at your lighting information. And in this case, it's visualized through these checkers. The smaller these checkers, the tighter your texture is compressed. That's really all there is to it. That means you've got a lot more texture information crammed into a small space. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term texel, it's just a combination of the word texture and the word pixel. So it's just a single texture pixel or a pixel of any given texture is referred to as a texel. So that is a quick look at all of the different view modes. Most of these are really just diagnostic views to help you uh, nail down and deal with performance problems in your level. The big players here are going to be your lit mode, which you'll be using a lot inside your perspective viewport. Just as a quick review, we have brush wireframe, which allows you to see your BSP brushes. Regular wireframe, which shows you the resultant geometry of your BSP brushes. We have unlit, which shows you your texture information, but no lighting info. We have lit mode, which is just, it's the pretty version. <laughs> we have lighting only, which doesn't show any of your textures. Light complexity, this gives you how many dynamic lights are affecting each individual object. Texture density, which is how tightly crammed your textures are on any given surface. Shader complexity, which is how many instructions are within any material on the surfaces of your objects. 
light map density, which is how dense or how much memory is going to be required for all of the light maps in your level. And finally, lighting only with texel density, which is just a way of looking at your lighting information combined with how tightly uh, compressed all of your textures are across the surfaces of your level. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot. This is just